Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here. I am in Brookhaven, New York, out on Long Island. It is Sunday, August 22nd, 2021, and I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about what's happening as Henri makes landfall today, what to expect. Remember, when these things make landfall, they don't stop. It's not like it hits land and then everything just dies and it's curtains on the whole thing and you can, everybody can just relax and it's no big deal. There will be impacts from Henri. It's a very unique event. It's a historic event, the first time in 30 years to have a direct threat from a hurricane. It has weakened, at least when we look at it from a technical perspective. It is not categorized as a hurricane any longer, but there are still going to be some pretty wide-reaching impacts. We saw that already becoming a problem last evening as very heavy rainfall fell on this band that set up on the west side of Henri, kind of related to it. And it dumped a lot of heavy rain, urban flooding uh, to a pretty big scale there in Metro New York, parts of northern New Jersey. And I'll show you a radar loop of that that continues now even in New Jersey today. So there's a lot to talk about. We'll get into it first, satellite loop. Uh, and as the note here from Dr. Cowan, this is Levi Cowan's website. He's now a Ph.D. holder. Is that what you would call it? Uh, and uh, he works for... I think the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, if I'm not mistaken. So Dr. Cowan, the author of all these tropicaltidbits.com products that you see. But the GOES data is running behind for whatever reason, and so these satellite pictures are not perfectly up to date. But nevertheless, this is Henri getting caught with this upper level energy over here, kind of trying to pinwheel it to the north, and it's going to slow down maybe pivot back to the northwest a little bit. And that is going to be a big problem because it's going to bring a lot of heavy rain over an area that has already had a lot of heavy rain this summer. And then you have the wind on top of it, some storm surge and coastal flooding, beach erosion, high waves, that kind of thing. Just a nasty weekend, at least the other half of it here Sunday, for most of Long Island and a good part of southeast New England. So real quick, this is a neat radar loop. In fact, let me go in and load it up. Let's give it 100 frames. We have some pretty blazing fast internet here at the hotel in Brookhaven. I say that and then it's like, okay, good, there it is. Um, really neat radar from Mark Nissenbaum at Florida State University and it's still loading all those frames. So this is a very long radar loop, all right? And uh, just to give you an idea of what's what and where's where. So this would be Montauk right here, Block Island over here, Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket over here. All right, so here's the circulation of the storm moving in. Some of the worst of the weather right now, probably some pretty stiff northeast winds over Block Island, but the rain shield rotating around, different bands coming through Long Island, all the way back to near where I am here in Brookhaven, uh, with east to northeast winds eventually shifting to the northwest later today. A very changeable day overall as this comes in and then maybe starts to pinwheel back to the northwest some. Very unusual. We are used to seeing hurricanes cut across and up and out like that, or offshore like that, and they do so in a big hurry. And Henri is not doing that. The reason is upper-level uh, piece of energy uh, cut off low, sitting back over this way, roughly capturing Henri, so to speak, kind of pivoting it in, and it changed the overall flow of things. It, it was kind of an impediment to not allow Henri to just scoot off to the northeast rapidly like we're used to seeing. And so the result is all of this very heavy rain, some of it not directly related to Henri, and that's right over here uh, in uh, New Jersey where flash flood warnings are in effect. Uh, again, parts of Manhattan last night, Metro New York, hit really hard by that heavy rain. So this is the setup, and this is going to be the deal for the next uh, 12 to 18 hours or so as this comes on shore and maybe pivots in just a little bit to the northwest, kind of stalls out some, uh, hopefully not a complete stall, before heading off to the northeast with time. That's what the guidance is showing this morning, and uh, this, is, this is it. It's going to make landfall soon, but like I said, it's not over, and this map here really helps to illustrate that. These are all the different watches and warnings that are going on up in the northeast part of the country. Flash flood watches, 
storm surge, uh, hurricane warning, tropical storm warning, high wind warning, you name it, urban flood advisories. And if you ever want to know exactly what these are, there's a couple of tips here for you. You can click on this map. So, for example, I can click right here in Connecticut, and you zoom in and you can see the different sort of patchwork there of all the different watches and warnings. You can click on further uh, an area that you're interested in. So maybe down here in southeast Connecticut, and it pulls up the local weather service uh, page from there. And then there's all this information right there. The hazardous weather conditions. It's in red for a reason. You can read that. It's very helpful. Written by and maintained by people that live in your area at your local weather service office. It's not computer generated. It's not a bot, as they call it. And so good, helpful info uh, right at your fingertips from the weather.gov site. All right, so real quick, wanted to show you through our insider site what we've been up to. Marcel, my uh, colleague from Braz uh, Brazil, by way of Boca Raton, he's come up from Brazil these last few years to study hurricanes, and uh, he lives down in Boca, came up uh, to check out what was happening with Henri and offered to help me while he was up here. So we worked hard yesterday to get all these camera systems set up. This is our digital dashboard. I'll show you these on a map in case you're wondering, well, where are all these places? Uh, a lot of cameras. These are all of our cameras. These are not DOT cams. These are not uh, somebody's fishing pier cam. There's a lot of cameras out there, millions of cameras. Well, we set these up for the specific purpose of hurricanes, severe weather, nor'easters, tropical storms, flood events, the monsoon in the desert southwest. That's what these are for. Hurricanes are the big draw, so to speak, and for good reason. I mean, look, look what's going on. Uh, looking at it from the tracking map perspective, our interactive map, really neat. You can see what we've done concentrated on eastern Long Island over here. And you might say, well, Mark, you missed it. The storm, uh, what was once a hurricane, is going to come into the east, and so you blew it. Well, let's just go back to this. I would say, looking at the radar, that we got it exactly right. Because on the east side of Henri's circulation, it's all but drying out. Big dry slot in there. And yes, there's some uh, onshore flow and some surge problems up here. But all of this heavy weather on the west side, these bands, creating onshore flow from the Long Island Sound. And that's just as important as the Atlantic. We're not interested in only, well, if it doesn't come from the Atlantic side, who cares? Well, believe me, a lot of people up here care, and they live and have property or interest on uh, the Long Island Sound, the north side. So let's just look. This is down at the jetty in Montauk. Pretty cool what we can do with this technology. Live pictures here, live imagery. It even has audio. Pretty neat, huh? So, you know, we take these little yellow pelican cases, and they're self-contained. can put them out there. This is what it looks like down at Montauk Point at a, a, a new friend of ours' house that we met. His name is Chip, and I met him because of a friend that I met because of Sandy uh, nine years ago now, right? 2012 to... 2021 is nine years, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. Yes, uh, Bill introduced me to Chip, and here we are, a camera system at Montauk Point. This is looking south towards the Atlantic, and the wide-angle nature to this shot, trust me, those are some big waves. They are bigger than you think. It's a wide-angle, 130-degree view shot. This is down at the pond. That's uh, Long Island Sound. Well, I say pond. It's Fort Pond Bay. Sorry. Uh, you know, pretty lively today. Not the worst thing ever, but still, usually it's like a mill pond out there, and not so much today. Moving on along to Truman's Beach, same kind of thing. This one's neat, though, because I wanted to get a perspective of the marsh over here, and maybe if there's any strong wind blowing across and we got some overwash from the water on the right. Haven't seen it yet, but the day is still young. You never know. Uh, moving on along, just going through the tour here. Down the map, Town Beach and Long Island, pretty rough there as well. And then something interior, New Suffolk, kind of protected in the way that the wind is coming across uh, this area, like this from the storm. Not much in the way of onshore flow. We would need Henri to have come in over this way to push the water in towards 
New Suffolk, for example, and all the other areas near Riverhead, uh, the reason they're not going to flood, hopefully, is because of the angle of attack. So just a neat way to kind of show you what's going on down at Iron Pier Beach. Yeah, camera got a little tilted there on the pole. It wasn't as thick of a, uh, a pole, so it's, it's kind of tilting a little bit. Yeah, just tilt your head. It'll be uh, horizontal. And then on the south side, we went all the way down to the Hampton Bay area, uh, and uh, we're close to it anyway, near Shinnecock Inlet. This is facing back towards the southwest. And then right on the bridge, we do have an anemometer uh, up there. It's not functioning properly. Something's goofy with these wind readings, and I'm glad to know that because we'll figure out what's wrong with it. It worked good during uh, Elsa down in Cedar Key, Florida, but the pressure is good, 1,003 millibars, and uh, considering how far that is away from Henri's center, that 1,003 millibars makes sense. Finally ending the tour here at Baiting Hollow. This is way up on the bluff looking down at Long Island Sound. Connecticut would be in the distance. Yeah, it's a pretty blustery day out there for sure. And this is what we do through the Hurricane Track Insider site off of hurricanetrack.com. It's crowdfunded through Patreon. And several dozen people have joined since this all started with uh, Henri. This is how you do so. $10 level, $25 level. You get different perks, if you will. But you know what? It's a neat crowdfunded project that helps to do and produce all of this. People's input, you know, they help to fund the equipment. And then I get to come up here and work with you all to make this happen. So, you know, I can sit here and show you maps and analyze what's going on and the radar and what we think is going to happen. But to be able to take you there, and that's why we have the slogan, you track it on your end using all these different tools, and we will take you there. And that's my job. That's what I do. So if you're brand new to the YouTube uh, videos that I do and you've just now heard of me, you know, for this event, this is me. This is what I do. This is our operation. Uh, it extends beyond hurricanes. You know, we try to cover other big-time weather events, especially as this crowdfunded science project takes off even more. We're able to do more and really immerse you in the action using science and not just the hype and what we call the hyperbole, you know, where everything has to be dramatic and have a lot of yelling and screaming out there. Let's let nature do its thing and kind of like a wildlife camera out in the wild or trying to capture some rare animal. We do the same for events like tropical storms and hurricanes. All right, so that'll about do it for uh, from me for this morning. Later today, I'm going to do another update, just kind of looking at Henri and what it, what's happening with it uh, several hours from now. Plus, we need to look ahead. There's more trouble brewing. We've got to talk about that. Not for the Northeast, hopefully, but it's the peak time of hurricane season, and we have some signs of uh, more activity coming up, and I'll talk about that later this afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in and listening and giving me a, a piece of your day. I appreciate it from whatever device you happen to be doing it from. It's good to have you. I am Mark Sedeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again later today.